Welcome back. So now that we have our model retopologized and UV mapped, now we're ready to get into the fun rendering part where we're going to be applying the texture maps. And we're going to be generating these texture maps in a special way in a process called baking. And what baking does is it takes the information from a high resolution model and calculates that, turning it into a texture map that's applied to the lower res model. So it's kind of like rendering from a camera, but you're actually using the the normal direction of the, the low res geometry itself in order to render instead of through a camera. So it's a little bit difficult to explain, but once you see it, the process, it makes perfect sense. So why don't we just jump into working on our model? So you're going to want to open up the model that you created in the UV mapping of the last file where you have that saved. Or if you're just jumping in here and you want to follow along, you can open up my file. So we're going to go into file open and we're going to want to go into video 8 and open the UV mapping folder here. So same drill as before, I'm going to go file, you know, save as and create a video 9 folder. And I'm going to call this file texture baking. All right, so now we can't overwrite that other file accidentally. So the first thing I'm going to show you is the traditional way of baking in Moto, where you're changing the visibility on your objects, adding images, and then manually selecting those images to, to initiate the baking process. So then you can see what an improvement it is to use the new baking tools that are found in Moto 10. So I think we'll just start off by baking one piece at a time with this armor piece, since that's what's visible. So let's jump into this alien and we'll turn on just the chest armor. Uh, and then the low res one, we're going to disable everything else so that all we're seeing is the armor itself. So the process of baking first is applying an image map to your, your texture. So we're going to go in here to the armor, select material, and I want to go to add layer, image map, and then we're going to go to new image. So, and within our folder here where we have our, our source files, I'm going to create a new folder called baked textures. And I can just make this a normal 8-bit PNG. And then we'll call this armor normal just to differentiate it. And we can click save on there. And then in the interest of speed for this tutorial demonstration, I'm just going to make this a 1K texture in RGB format. Uh, but typically, you're going to want to be baking these out at 4K. It just takes a lot longer to render and calculate that. So I'm going to click OK. And what that does is it creates our image map layer here in the shader tree. And you want to change this to the type of effect that you want. And we want to do this uh, with a normal map. So when you apply the normal map, it pops up this little, little message here telling you that you want to disable the, uh, the color correction. So we want to click Yes. And what that did is that went in here to the image still. Uh, and this color space is just set to None. Uh, and then this kind of messes up the display of the model. So I think just temporarily I'm going to disable that since we haven't baked any information into it yet, it's going to be giving us that weird display. All right, so before I jump in and start doing the baking, first, I know from experience that when you have multiple meshes that are close to each other and they're overlapping, uh, it causes rendering errors. It causes baking errors. You're going to get some strange stuff in the intersection positions of this. And it'll probably make more sense as we go through and demonstrate that later on. Uh, but for right now, what we want to do is we want to take some of these intersecting pieces and move them away from the regular model uh, so that they don't cause these sorts of errors. And that's called exploding your model for baking. It's a pretty normal thing that you do when you're working on models like this. So we're going to simplify this workflow by just adding a, a morph map to this object in order to do that. So we want to apply the morph map to both objects at the same time. So what we want to do is make sure that we hold down the control key 
and then we select both of those objects. So now we're going to go into our lists viewport and then under the morph map, we want to create a new morph map for these pieces. So we want to make sure you select an absolute morph map. So if you've ever wondered what use an absolute morph map is, this is it right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this one base position and make sure you have the initial value enabled. Uh, and then we're going to click OK. And what this is, is this is going to represent this shape or this position that the model is in right now. And by doing it this way, we won't have any have to do any shenanigans to apply deformers or any of that sort of stuff to the item in order to to apply the morph to it. So we're basically going to be modifying the the base geometry baking and then applying this morph that we've just created back later on to put everything back into place. So it's very important. You want to hold down control and disable that morph now because we're going to be modifying the actual geometry. So I'm going to make sure I'm in polygons mode here and we're just going to select these little bits right here and I'm going to hit the right bracket to make sure I got everything selected. W for my move tool. And then I have my element action center. That's alt Z if you don't have that selected and I'm just going to click on my element here and move this out. So I'm going to move it out hundred millimeters there just to make sure it's far enough away from the geometry that it's not going to cause any issues and on this side we're going to do the same thing here now this little medallion piece in the front that we modeled separately Let's pull him out too. So we should be able to just kind of double click on these somewhere to get them all selected. Select an element. Move him about about 120 millimeters. All right, so now you can see that if we select this base position morph map, it's gonna pop everything back into place. So that'll save us later on once we're done baking and we're ready to export the model, we'll apply those morphs uh, and that'll get everything back to where we want it to be. All right. So we've exploded our model. We've created our morph map. Uh, we have our image in the shader tree. So now we need to make sure that we do our selection. So I'm going to control click on the chest armor layer. So that is visible but not selected. Now our low res body mesh layer is the one that's selected and it's highlighted. So that means it's a foreground. This is in the background object. Uh, and then we're going to go to the lists here and we want to make sure we have this bake texture UV map selected. Go into the shader tree here. We have our texture layer selected. So now what we're going to do is we're going to invoke the bake procedure. So I'm going to right click on there and I'm going to go from bake from object to the texture. So that's going to be using that background high res geometry to generate the information for this texture now. So click on that. That will initiate the baking. So now we get this little pop up here and this lets you specify a cage, which is basically a morph map that allows you to control uh, more directly the the ray distance. Uh, but we're not going to be doing any cage baking in this tutorial. Uh, we can just specify a distance. So by default, this will typically be zero and you want to give it enough of a distance so that, that what, so I can explain what's happening. Basically a ray comes out from the normal direction of the background geometry, the distance that you specify, and it comes back in to the surface. So if we specify eight millimeters, it's going to come out eight millimeters. It's going to come down to the surface eight millimeters, and then it's going to go inside that normal eight millimeters. So it's going to give you a 16 millimeter range from the high and low with which to calculate what that normal direction is. So this, in this case, we're calculating a normal. So the ray is going to come out, come back in, uh, and then it's going to calculate the distance or the difference in the normal facing direction based on that position where that ray was fired. And then it encodes that as a color and that's what ends up being the normal map. 
So we set a distance of eight millimeters on there and click OK. Now Moto is going to bake out that texture map. So this should only take a couple of minutes. So you can see when you have little black holes like this uh, in your surface, that that means that your ray depth wasn't enough. So maybe we can increase this, but I think there's also something weird with this geometry right here on that, that area of the arm that we could go in there and tweak that a little bit. But for this tutorial, I'm just going to keep moving along. All right, so now it's completed baking out the image. Uh, and we have this image here. But the, uh, the Moto caches these textures. Uh, so if we just enable it now, we're not going to see the results right away. So we want to come over here to this Clips viewport. And what you want to do is you want to right click on the texture itself, hit Save. Then we're just going to go in here to Reload. And that forces Moto to update. So now you can see a dramatic difference in that model. So if I disable the view of the background geometry now, and we select that morph map, you can see now what a good facsimile that low resolution geometry is of the background geometry. So there's the, the issues on that shoulder piece that need to be adjusted, but I'm not gonna worry about that for right now. So I mean, that's a pretty good looking normal map right there. And then if we disable and enable that, you can see what a dramatic difference that makes. Once you apply all the other effects, it's equally impressive what the, uh, what the results are looking like in capturing the detail from the high res model, but using far fewer polygons. So it's a little bit tedious. That's the sort of the traditional single texture way of baking. So in the next video, I'm going to show you how to use the newly introduced bake wizard and we're going to automate this entire process. So now that you've seen the traditional or the manual way of baking textures from previous versions of Moto, I'm going to show you how to use the baking wizard. And since we're going to be automating a lot of this texture creation, I'm just going to uh, delete this guy, blow him out of my scene completely. Scroll down here and delete him out of the clips list. OK, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using our texture baking wizard. Uh, and that is found in the new games tools layout that's available in Moto 10. So we can switch to that with our layout switcher with the control tab. And we're just going to scroll over here to the game tools, click on that and open it up. And I am just going to maximize my view here with the 3D viewport. And also another nice thing about using the baking wizard before we start here is we can just enable all of these layers and the baking wizard takes care of all of the visibility. All right, so we have everything turned on there. Everything's visible. And the wizard itself is found here in the toolbox under baking. Uh, and then we just need to click on the baking wizard. Now to sort of get an idea of what the baking wizard is actually going to be doing, let's go over here to the shader tree. And I'll leave this bake armor section here open so you can see exactly what it's going to do. So really what this bake wizard is, is it's multiple pages. And we're just going to be answering some of these questions, going through and setting up uh, these options here. Uh, and then it's going to automatically going to be creating that. And the beauty of it is it saves a lot of that. It basically retains all of the settings that you apply to it. And then each time you go back, you only need to update a few things and then you can create the new textures. So let's go through. I'll take you through this process a couple of times and then you'll be free to do it yourself to finish off the rest of the scene. So the first object we're going to be baking is going to be the armor. So we're just going to give this a prefix of armor. And then we can set the format for that. And that's going to be a regular 8-bit PNG. Now we're going to browse to that baked textures folder. And we're going to select that folder. And I'm going to bake these at 4K. And then we need to specify that baked texture UV for these guys. And we're not going to be doing any cage baking. And I think I'm going to set this to 12 millimeters. 
Well, we could probably get away with eight. I always try and get away with the lowest value that I can that still gets good results that doesn't cause any sort of baking errors or issues. Because once you start getting it larger, you can get reverse intersections as the rays come up. They're kind of intersecting neighboring surfaces. So the material we're going to be targeting is this bake armor. So we put that bake prefix on everything so it'd be easier to find in this list. So bake armor, we select that. Now these bake hidden target meshes, uh, bake hidden source meshes, and bake hidden outputs, uh, that basically, if these are disabled in the shader tree, if these are enabled here, it'll bake them anyways. So you can toggle these on or off. I actually like to just turn them off so that way I can control it directly in the shader tree with their visibility. So once we have those settings here, then we go to next step. Now what this does is this lets us select the meshes. So since we're gonna be doing the armor, we can pull these out a little bit. So since the low res body armor was selected automatically, that's being set as your target. That's where the textures are gonna be baked too. And then this is the source armor right there. And then we'll go to the next step. And if we had some existing outputs in the shader tree already we wanted to add, we could do that here, but we're not, we're not doing that. Now in this step, we actually define the surfaces uh, that we want to have baked. Something that I should mention in case it isn't clear is when you're baking from different surfaces, you need to use like surface settings in order to bake. So effectively, you couldn't bake any luminosity information into a diffuse color. I mean, diffuse color is only going to go to diffuse color. And if you'll remember, the asset that we started with was set up with traditional moto shading. So it's not using the Unity shaders. So what we're going to need to do is bake out those traditional image maps. And we'll use those to do some look dev that will create textures that will be compatible with Unity. So if you're in control of this asset from beginning to end, of course, you'd be texturing it using the Unreal shaders, and then you would just be baking out metalness, you'd just be baking out the, the uh, diffuse colors or the base color for, for Unreal Engine. But in this case, you kind of have to look through the shader tree and understand what the surfacing was applied to the source mesh. So in my case, I know that it was diffuse specular roughness, and then we're also going to bake out a normal map and an ambient occlusion output. So let's add those here. So that would be the diffuse color, and then we're going to add in the specular amount. That is right there. And we'll add in the roughness. Roughness, there we are, roughness is right there. And then we also want to add in a normal map. All right, so we have normal, roughness, specular, diffuse, and then we're going to add a render output for ambient occlusion. So we're baking one, two, three, four, five for each one. And that automatically creates the, the naming suffix on there. Now there's several options up here. Once you've basically answered all these questions or filled in all of these forms, you could just click bake only and it would just go through and bake these right away and put them in the shader tree. But what I want to do is just create the bake item only. So you right click on that to open this little fly out menu and then you click on the bake item only or bake item only and you'll see what that's going to do here all right so it added a ambient occlusion render output here and then it also added a bake item for the render output and then it added a texture baking bake item And the bake item itself basically holds all of that information, where the distance was, what the targets are. Uh, and then now that you have that texture bake item in there, that's going to control all your visibility. That's going to control your textures. Then you can go through these texture outputs, even though it lists them as mixed air. All of these textures we just created are part of this texture baking item. And then we can just go back and bake this selected item later on and we just automatically do all of those textures. So this one I'm going to call armor just so we can keep things organized. And that has a 
has the armor name there. So we'll do the next one here. So I'll go in here. So the next one is the knee pads. So we'll open up the baking wizard by clicking on this and we'll give this the prefix knee pad. That say it keeps the same settings. We're going to save them in the same place, but this ones, these are much smaller. So I think we can get away with 512 textures on there. Same UV map, same distance. And we just need to change in here the bake knee pad. Go to the next step. And then we just want to make sure that we select the target as those knee pads and that knee pad as the source. No existing outputs. Now this is going to put in all of these same uh, outputs here for us and textures. So we just need to right click on there and create bake item only. So you can see if we open up the knee pad item here that we have the knee pad textures created. And the knee pad bake item. So that's basically all you need to do for each one of these items that we're going to be baking a separate texture to. You go through with the bake wizard and it automatically creates those images for you. So I'm going to pause the video here. I'm going to finish this off and I'll be back in just a second. All right, so that's completed now and that only took a couple of minutes to do, even including making an additional morph map to push the air breathing tubes away from the back of the uniform. But you can see that it created all of the various images in here and assigned them the various effects on all of that. So we have some one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times four plus another ten render outputs. That's 40 textures all created in just a couple of minutes. So much easier than doing the manual methodology of that. So now the beauty of the bake item is that we can just come down here uh, and then we can select any one of the bake items and we can either select a few of them and hit bake selected or if we just hit bake all, it's going to go through the process of baking all of those textures that are included in here that we created. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then when that's done, you can select one of the render outputs and bake all, and then it'll bake all of the render outputs. So it's basically a way of batch rendering all of the various textures in your scene. So you can just set it up, walk away. When you come back, everything will be already assigned for you. So let's go ahead and do that now. So we click bake all, and then that's going to go through the process of starting to bake. So I guess I will see you in a few hours. All right, so what was only a few seconds for you was a few hours for me, but we've got all of the baking is completed now on this character. And we can switch over here to the images tab and see all of the textures, some 46 textures uh, that were baked in total, if you include the ambient occlusions. And if any of these have this little asterisk next to them, that's just indicating that the files haven't been saved. So we can go up here to file and save all, and that'll automatically just save any images in your image list that haven't been saved yet. Now, the next thing you're going to want to do once all of these images are baked, so you want to check them out. So you can either check them out on the, the object so we can disable our high res character here. And you can see certain errors like this on the, the belt pouch. A few here on the, the boot. But it looks like overall everything is pretty good. Uh, another thing that I would recommend is getting some sort of an, an image viewer. So I'm just going to use bridge here really quickly. And we can get more uh, or we can get a better sort of view of what's going on by sort of going through and systematically inspecting all of these. So when you see black holes like this, uh, that means that your ray depth wasn't deep enough. And in this case, for the boots, this piece right here covers over that. But that's what you want to be looking for is this black stuff. Because that's going to show you where the ray depth wasn't deep enough. 
So you have a little bit here on these knee pads, so that's going to need to be increased. Obviously, it didn't work out on the, the pouches, as I've already mentioned. And then there was also that error that we'd mentioned earlier that could be adjusted a little bit there on the, the sleeve area, I guess, of the, the body armor. But overall, I'd say that the baking looks pretty good. We have a couple of unnecessary maps in here, the, the roughness and the specular amount. And there was also some other effect here that I wanted to point out. Uh, you get this sort of weird line that I noticed inside of here, and I think what that is from, if we sort of delve into the shading of the high-res alien and we look at the shiny silver surface on this guy, he is a gradient, and that's set to incidence angle, and that's controlling the roughness. So what we want to do is we want to disable that gradient, and then we would also rebake the, the bodysuit on that. So now we're going to fix the errors that we had in those baking items. And this really shows the flexibility of the bake item, where we can just select these and adjust the values and then bake them again. So on the boots, we're going to go in here and maybe make this 15. And let's find the, where's the belt? There's the belt. Make that up to 15. And then what you would do is you would just control click both of those and get those selected and then we would just click the bake selected and that would rebake those and then we want to save the images basically what the bake item allows you to do is continually refine your image bakes very easily without needing to do any visibility and selection shenanigans of course the traditional way is available too if you ever need it okay so i'm not going to bore you anymore with these refinements i think we can continue without making these fixes right now it's pretty obvious now, I think, of what's necessary to make them. So what I'm going to do now is show you what all this baked goodness looks like in a real-time environment. So I think the best way to see that, obviously, is we can go to our list view here. And go to our morph maps, select our base position there to pop everything back into place. And then I'm going to jump over here to our advanced viewport now. So the advanced viewport really does a good job of displaying what those various texture maps do in the viewport. So you get a real-time view of the moto shading that we've all just baked in there, the normal maps and everything. Uh, but I think to really show this off, we can use a global illumination environment in here. And the way that it was set up in the original file doesn't really show off that effect very well because we're using a couple of environments. So what I need to do is move this into the top environment so that the so that the viewport can see that effectively. So I'm going to move that into there. And then I'm going to go into the advanced options here for the viewport. And you just want to make sure that the lighting is set to scene and environment and that your background is set to environment. And then it'll use that for the reflections and the lighting of your scene. Now you can see how much more impressive that looks. So we have a little bit of a, uh, a pirate look here, a one-legged one Pete. But that will be resolved uh, once we're finished baking out and resolving all those maps. We can mirror these objects over, so I'm not ready to do that quite yet. Obviously there is some error in there too in the boots, but increasing that depth will fix that. Okay, so... That pretty much wraps up the Baking for Unity portion of this training. In this video, I showed you the traditional manual way to bake textures, and we also went through automating the setup with the Bake Wizard to generate the images, and then using the Bake items to iterate and refine the maps. In the next video, we'll be doing some look dev to convert these baked maps to Unity-compatible versions, and then preparing everything for our final export. There's still quite a bit to do, but we're now on the home stretch, so let's get to work. Welcome back. So now that we have our model retopologized and UV mapped, now we're ready to get into the fun rendering part where we're going to be applying the texture maps. And we're going to be generating these texture maps in a special way in a process called baking. 
And what baking does is it takes the information from a high resolution model and calculates that, turning it into a texture map that's applied to the lower res model. So it's kind of like rendering from a camera, but you're actually using the the normal direction of the, the low res geometry itself in order to render instead of through a camera. So it's a little bit difficult to explain, but once you see the process, it makes perfect sense. So why don't we just jump into working on our model? So you're gonna to wanna to open up the model that you created in the UV mapping of the last file where you have that saved, or if you're just jumping in here and you wanna follow along, you can open up my file. So we're gonna go into file, open, and we're gonna to wanna to go into video eight and open the UV mapping folder here. So same drill as before, I'm going to go file, you know, save as, I'm gonna create a video nine folder. And I'm gonna call this file texture baking. All right, so now we can't overwrite that other file accidentally. So the first thing I'm gonna show you is the traditional way of baking in Moto, where you're changing the visibility on your objects, adding images, and then manually selecting those images to, to initiate the baking process. So then you can see what an improvement it is to use the new baking tools that are found in Moto 10. So I think we'll just start off by baking one piece at a time with this armor piece, since that's what's visible. So let's jump into this alien and we'll turn on just the chest armor. Uh, and then in the low res one, we're gonna disable everything else so that all we're seeing is the armor itself. So the process of baking first is applying an image map to your, your texture. So we're gonna go in here to the armor, select material, and I wanna to go to add layer, image map, and then we're gonna to go to new image. So, and within our folder here where we have our, our source files, I'm gonna create a new folder called baked textures. And I can just make this a normal 8-bit PNG. And then we'll call this armor normal just to differentiate it. And we can click save on there. And then in the interest of speed for this tutorial demonstration, I'm just gonna make this a 1K texture in RGB format. Uh, but typically you're gonna wanna be baking these out at 4K. It just takes a lot longer to render and calculate that. So I'm gonna click OK. And what that does is it creates our image map layer here in the shader tree. And you wanna change this to the type of effect that you want. And we wanna do this uh, with a normal map. So when you apply the normal map, it pops up this little, little message here telling you that you wanna disable the, uh, the color correction. So we wanna click yes. And what that did is that went in here to the image still uh, and this color space is just set to none. Uh, and then this kinda messes up the display of the model. So I think just temporarily I'm gonna disable that since we haven't baked any information into it yet, it's gonna be giving us that weird display. All right, so before I jump in and start doing the baking, first, I know from experience that when you have multiple meshes that are close to each other and they're overlapping, uh, it causes rendering errors, it causes baking errors. You're gonna get some strange stuff in the intersection positions of this. And it'll probably make more sense as we go through and demonstrate that later on. Uh, but for right now, what we wanna do is we wanna take some of these intersecting pieces and move them away from the regular model uh, so that they don't cause these sorts of errors. And that's called exploding your model for baking. It's a pretty normal thing that you do when you're working on models like this. So we're gonna simplify this workflow by just adding a, a morph map to this object in order to do that. So we wanna apply the morph map to both objects at the same time. So what we wanna do is make sure that we hold down the control key and that we select both of those objects. So now we're gonna go into our lists viewport and then under the morph map, 
we want to create a new morph map for these pieces. So we want to make sure you select an absolute morph map. So if you've ever wondered what use an absolute morph map is, this is it right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this one base position. And make sure you have the initial value enabled. Uh, and then we're going to click OK. And what this is, is this is going to represent this shape or this position that the model is in right now. And by doing it this way, we won't have any have to do any shenanigans to apply deformers or any of that sort of stuff to the item in order to, to apply the morph to it. So we're basically going to be modifying the, the base geometry baking and then applying this morph that we've just created back later on to put everything back into place. So it's very important you want to hold down control and disable that morph now because we're going to be modifying the actual geometry. So I'm going to make sure I'm in polygons mode here and we're just going to select these little bits right here and I'm going to hit the right bracket to make sure I got everything selected. W for my move tool and then I have my element action center that's alt Z if you don't have that selected and I'm just gonna click on my element here and move this out so I'm gonna move it out a hundred millimeters there just to make sure it's far enough away from the geometry that it's not gonna cause any issues and on this side we're gonna do the same thing here Now this little medallion piece in the front that we modeled separately, let's pull him out too. So we should be able to just kind of double click on these somewhere to get them all selected. Select an element. Move him about about 120 millimeters. All right, so now you can see that if we select this base position morph map, it's going to pop everything back into place. So that'll save us later on once we're done baking and we're ready to export the model, we'll apply those morphs uh, and that'll get everything back to where we want it to be. All right. So we've exploded our model. We've created our morph map. Uh, we have our image in the shader tree. So now we need to make sure that we do our selection. So I'm going to control click on the chest armor layer so that is visible but not selected. Now our low res body mesh layer is the one that's selected and it's highlighted. So that means it's a foreground. This isn't a background object. Uh, and then we're going to go to the lists here and we want to make sure we have this bake texture UV map selected. Go into the shader tree here. We have our texture layer selected. So now what we're going to do is we're going to invoke the bake procedure. So I'm going to right click on there and I'm going to go from bake from object to the texture. So that's going to be using that background high res geometry to generate the information for this texture now. So click on that. That will initiate the baking. So now we get this little pop up here and this lets you specify a cage, which is basically a morph map that allows you to control uh, more directly the, the ray distance, uh, but we're not going to be doing any cage baking in this tutorial. Uh, we can just specify a distance. So by default, this will typically be zero and you want to give it enough of a distance so that, that what, so I can explain what's happening. Basically a ray comes out from the normal direction of the background geometry, the distance that you specify, and it comes back in to the surface. So if we specify eight millimeters, it's going to come out eight millimeters. It's going to come down to the surface eight millimeters, and then it's going to go inside that normal eight millimeters. So it's going to give you a 16 millimeter range from the high and low with which to calculate what that normal direction is. So this, in this case, we're calculating a normal. So the ray is going to come out, come back in, uh, and then it's going to calculate the distance or the difference in the normal facing direction based on that position where that ray was fired. And then it encodes that as a color and that's what ends up being the normal map. So we set a distance of eight millimeters on there and click okay. Now Moto is gonna bake out that texture map. 
So this should only take a couple of minutes. So you can see when you have little black holes like this uh, in your surface, that that means that your ray depth wasn't enough. So maybe we can increase this, but I think there's also something weird with this geometry right here on that, that area of the arm that we could go in there and tweak that a little bit. But for this tutorial, I'm just gonna keep moving along. All right, so now it's completed baking out the image uh, and we have this image here but the, uh, the Moto caches these textures. Uh, so if we just enable it now, we're not gonna see the results right away. So we wanna come over here to this clips viewport. And what you wanna do is you wanna right click on the texture itself, hit save. Then we're just gonna go in here to reload. And that forces Moto to update. So now you can see a dramatic difference in that model. So if I disable the view of the background geometry now, and we select that morph map, you can see now what a good facsimile that low resolution geometry is of the background geometry. So there's the, the issues on that shoulder piece that need to be adjusted, but I'm not gonna worry about that for right now. So I mean, that's a pretty good looking normal map right there. And then if we disable and enable that, you can see what a dramatic difference that makes. Once you apply all the other effects, it's equally impressive what the uh, what the results are looking like in capturing the detail from the high-res model, but using far fewer polygons. So it's a little bit tedious. That's the sort of the traditional single texture way of baking. So in the next video, I'm going to show you how to use the newly introduced Bake Wizard, and we're going to automate this entire process. So I've shown you the traditional manual method of baking textures in Moto. Now I want to demonstrate to you the automated way of using the Bake Wizard to generate your image maps and your bake items that's introduced in Moto 10. And before we move forward, I want to note that previously I was using 10.0 to record my videos, but there were some important fixes that were introduced into the recently released 10.1. So if you're going to be generating assets for Unreal Engine 4, I really urge you to grab that free update. And when you do that, you're also going to get the procedural modeling goodies as well. So since I'm going to be demonstrating you the automated method, we actually do not need this image map in here anymore. So I'm just going to blow that away by selecting it and hitting delete. And I'm actually going to go into my images and just completely remove it from the scene because it was unnecessary now. So blow that guy away. So now the rest of this tutorial we can actually complete in the games tool layout. So I'm gonna hit my control tab to open up my switcher and jump over here to games tools. When you first open your games tool layout, you're gonna get this tri view here of all of the viewports and we just wanna focus on the modeling aspect. So I'm just gonna maximize that view right there. And I'm actually going to enable all of my meshes because using bake items actually controls the visibility during baking for you. So we can just enable all of these guys here. All right, I got those enabled. And I also wanna just quickly go in here and disable my morph map that I had on there that was uh, putting those objects back together. Now before we jump in and use the baking wizard here found in the baking toolbox, for Unreal Engine 4, we wanna make sure to assign the proper tangent basis for our models. And the way that you do that is by selecting your object. And then we're gonna go here into the vertex map toolbox. And at the bottom here, we have this assign tangent vectors option. And by right clicking on that, we open up this little flyout and it'll let you assign tangent vectors for several popular game engines. For Unreal Engine 4, we wanna use the MIC tangent basis. So I'm just gonna left click on there and I'll show you what that does. If we go into our list viewport here, we can look at other maps. And what is created here is this bake texture tangent basis map. And this is used in conjunction with the normal baking in order to produce the correct results. 
So we can actually just select all of our layers here. So I'll hold down shift and select all of those layers. And then I'm just going to left mouse button click again. And that's going to add in that Bake Textures tangent basis. And I should mention that this Bake Textures names just comes from the UV map that's associated to that particular layer. So if we click on here, we can see that there's that tangent basis that gets added there. And I also want to note that if you make any topological changes to your model, if you make any adjustments to it, you're going to want to blow that away by right-clicking on it and deleting the map and generating a new one. All right. So the next step, we're going to go into the baking toolbox here, and I'm just going to click on my baking wizard. So the baking wizard is several options that we're going to go through, and we're just going to define a set of values. And then based on that, the baking wizard will generate our items for us. So it's a much easier process to do this by setting up these options in here rather than having to manually create each one individually. So the first thing I want to concentrate on is the, the body armor here. So I am going to call my base image maps armor. This value defines the prefix for all the images it creates. And I'm going to save those as 8-bit PNG files, just my favorite format. Now for the destination directory, this is where it's going to automatically save our textures too. So I'm just going to click on Browse. And for this, I'm going to move that into the Bake Textures folder that we generated earlier. And then I want to bake all of my textures out at 4K just because I find it's easier to start out higher resolution and then you can just scale it down. So we don't have any UDIMs on these game assets. So the UV option defines the UV map, but that's already set for us. We're not doing any cage baking. Now the distance is the same option that came up earlier in the, the baking pop-up, and this defines the ray distance. So I'm going to put in 12 millimeters. You know what? Actually, I think I'm going to put in 8 millimeters, just because I like to put in the minimal distance possible to make sure that we don't get any sort of reverse intersections in some concave areas. Now for the target material, what we define in here is the name of where the images are going to go in the shader tree. And since we put this prefix for bake on all of our surfaces, it makes it easier for us to find them. So that's just going to be the bake armor surface. Now we have several options down here. And this is the bake hidden sources, bake hidden targets. And effectively what this will do, if something's disabled in your items list or your shader tree, this will bake them anyways, even if they're hidden. But I personally like to disable these, and that gives me control to toggle things on and off within the items list in the shader tree so that I can get more control over what gets baked. So now once we have all of that defined, we can click Next Step. And in this step, we actually define the meshes that will be used for the actual visibility. So since armor was selected, it gets set as the target. And then we're going to put the other armor piece as the source, the background piece there. So this is what counts as our foreground object, as we did earlier. Uh, and this is what counts as our background object, the source. And then we go to our next step. And in this step, we would define any existing render outputs that we wanted to add into our bake item, but we don't have any of those. So we're just going to skip this step. Now, in this step, we actually define the surfaces uh, that we want to have baked. Something that I should mention, in case it isn't clear, is when you're baking from different surfaces, you need to use like surface settings in order to bake. So effectively, you couldn't bake any luminosity information into a diffuse color. I mean, diffuse color is only going to go to diffuse color. And if you'll remember, the asset that we started with was set up with traditional moto shading. So it's not using the Unreal shaders. So what we're going to need to do is bake out those traditional image maps. And then we're going to have to use those to do some look dev, develop textures that will work in Unreal Engine. So if you're in control of this asset from beginning to end, of course, you'd be texturing it using the Unreal shaders, and then you would just be baking out metalness, you'd just be baking out the, the uh, diffuse colors or the base color for, 
for Unreal Engine. But in this case, you kind of have to look through the shader tree and understand what the surfacing was applied to the source mesh. So in my case, I know that it was diffuse specular roughness. And then we're also going to bake an Unreal Normal and the ambient occlusion. So let's go in and add those. So I'll add in my diffuse color. And that automatically adds in a suffix in there for us. So the file name is going to be called Armor Diff Color. And then we're going to get the specular amount. We're going to get the roughness here. Roughness. There's the roughness. Now, since this is specific for Unreal, we want to add in the Unreal Normal. So that's going to be right here. And then we're going to want to add in a render output for ambient occlusion. Now, you'll notice that you have a couple of little options here for the Unreal Normal that get added in here. And this is important to note that you want to enable the invert green and the per pixel by tangent. And these are actually the options that were added into 10.1 that are so important for generating your normal maps for Unreal Engine. So once we've done that, if we were to click this bake button now or bake only button, what would happen is it would generate these maps into the shader tree and it would instantly start baking. But since we have multiple items we want to attend to, all we need to do is right click on there and then we want to just go to create the bake items only. So we click that and give it a minute and it'll sit there and generate our images for us. And then once those are generated, I'll show you what those look like in the shader tree. All right, we can close that out now. And if we go into our shader tree, now you can see that it took that prefix, the armor, and added our suffix on each one of those. And it's properly defined the effect for each one of those. And it's assigned the UV map proper for each one of these things. So everything's all set up. And then if you see, if we select the, the normal map and we go into the properties here, you can see this invert green option has been enabled for us. So that's what the invert green was. And that's what you need to do in order to bake out a proper normal map for Unreal Engine. And I also want to point out that in the texture locator, we'll go, go down here, that other option for the by tangent per pixel by tangent, that sets up the tangent vector type here as this DPDU cross product. So you have a couple of options here. And for Unreal Engine, you need to make sure that this cross product is the option that is selected. So those are the images. And then if we scroll down here, we can also see that it's created a image baking bake item and a render output bake item. So I actually like to go in and rename these just to be tidy. So I'm going to call this the armor texture bake item. And this already has the armor in the name for the render output. And then you can see the actual render output is added into a group up here as well. So we can rename that just to be clean. And then I like to color code these just to make it more obvious that they stand out from everything else. So right click on there. We can just select like a green for the render output. Maybe an orange for the render output bake item. And a yellow for the texture bake item. So let's go back and set this up again just to make sure that we're clear on the process. So I select the item that I want to bake and then I just click on my baking wizard. So since this is going to be the knee pads, I want to set my base file name to knee pad on there and then it remembers all of my other settings. Now the knee pad doesn't need to be 4K so I think I can bake that out at 512. Same UV map. Uh, we're fine with the same distance and then we want to uh, define the target material. So that's going to be the bake knee pads material so we can go to next step and then of course we select the proper items here. So the knee pads there, disable that. Go to the next step, no render outputs. 
And then these are our materials again. So it's remembered what we set last time. So we only need to right click on there and then go to create bake item only. So we give that a minute again there to set up the bake items in the shader tree. All right, now if we look in the shader tree there, we can open up those knee pads and see that our images were indeed created in there and we got the texture items on here. So this is knee pad on that. We can make this orange, make this guy yellow. Knee pad. And then make that green. All right, I think that's it. So you don't need to see me go through this time and time again. So I'm just going to pause the video here and I'll be back in just a second when I have all of this stuff applied here and then we can actually do the baking. Okay, so using the baking wizard, I've gone through now and I've finished assigning all of the various textures. And considering there's some 35 textures plus another nine render outputs, so about 45 images altogether, it really didn't take very long. It probably took me less than 10 minutes and that's including making a morph map for these tubes back here using the same process that I used on the chest medallion to explode those away from the body for proper baking. So you can see all of the images are assigned and in the shader tree here. So once you've done that, you want to make sure to control S so I've gone ahead and I've changed the name on this so you can refer to the original file if necessary. I've just called this one Texture Baking Complete. So we save that file out now. So I thought I should also mention uh, that with all of these bake items, in case there's some images that you wanted to add later or things that you wanted to change, all of these buttons here in the baking toolbox, all of these sort of serve the bake items here and allow you to add and remove items by simply selecting them and then se selecting your bake item and then using the, uh, the add and remove button. So it should be fairly self-explanatory. If any of that stuff uh, isn't quite clear to you, if should you need to use that outside of the baking wizard itself, then I, I recommend just referring to the documentation for that. So before we go into the next step, I also wanted to point out one other problem that was uncovered during the recording of this training. And that is when you assign the normal map using the baking wizard, it is not properly assigning the color management for OCIO. So I've gone through and I fixed this already, but what's happening is when you use the baking wizard to generate the unreal normal maps, it's applying the default color space and you really want that to set to none for that. So if you happen to end up baking without fixing that error, you're gonna to need to fix that after the fact in Photoshop, but I prefer to do the fix before baking them by just disabling the color management because normal maps should be linear. And the easy way to fix that is just to go into the, the find here and then just type in normal. And then you can just go through and select these holding down the control key. And then we can just gang edit them by clicking on the image still and then selecting the, the none color space output and then saving your file again. And that'll resolve any issue you would have with the color management on the, the normal maps. And actually, hopefully by the time you've watched this, a fix has been released uh, that eliminates that problem. But if not, that's something you wanna look out for just to make sure that you get the proper normal maps when you're baking. All right, so all that's left now is to actually do the final baking. So if you wanted to just selectively do a couple of bake items, we could just hold down the control key and click a few of these guys and then hit the bake selected. But we really wanna just bake them all. And so what we do for that is just select any one of the texture bake items and we can hit bake all. And that will systematically go through and bake through all of the bitmaps or all of, the, all of the textures that you've defined in all of your bake items, and it's all an unattended process, so you can just literally 
Just get it baking, walk away, and when it's finished, you can just save out all of your images, and then you can select any one of the render output bake items, and then do the bake all on those, and it'll systematically go through and bake all of those objects as well. So we're gonna start the baking process now on this, so just click one and bake all. And I don't think you want a real-time view of the several hours it's going to take to bake all of these. So I will stop here, and I'm going to let these bake, and I'll see you in a little bit. All right, so what was just a few seconds for you was uh, several hours for me. It didn't actually take all that long, but we baked out all of the textures now on here. And we can uh, look at these in the Image tab and see that they're all baked out. I actually have the folder here. You can open that up to see all of those textures that we baked. So we baked out some 46 textures here. So what we can do now is we want to kind of inspect to make sure that all of our baking has taken place properly. So the best way to do that, if we want to do that in the viewport, so we're going to disable that background object, and then we can come in here and start sort of inspecting some of these things. So we have an issue here with the pouch. You can tell that the ray distance wasn't deep enough on that. Obviously, there's something going on with the boot here. I think somewhere along the line, I made that a little bit too, re too low resolution on that, obviously. So I think in order to fix that issue, we're going to go over to the, the boot. And we're going to select these. And I'm going to set the resolution on these images. So I'm going to increase those. So that's currently 512. I want that to be, for the boots, 2048. It's going to have to resize those, so texture, image processing, set resolution, 2048, texture, image processing, set resolution, 2048, texture, image processing, set resolution, 2048. So and I'm also going to come down here to the boot item, and the distance 8 millimeters obviously wasn't deep enough, so I'm going to change that to 15 millimeters on that. And then we also had an issue on the, the belt, so I'm going to change that belt on there, and we'll change that to 15 millimeters. That should resolve the issue on the belt. And another thing that I would recommend, that if you have the ability to do so, is to use some sort of an image editor or an image viewer to inspect the images in a lar larger size. So I have Adobe Bridge here, and we can just go through and just systematically click on each one of these objects and try and look for anything weird about any of these images. So I can see right here that we have this gr this sort of weird dark gradation in the maps and I'm thinking that that is a view dependent sort of effect that we're going to want to disable and bake again for that yeah the boots were too low a resolution and the the knee pads also didn't have a deep enough ray limit on there So we're going to need to go into the original high-res alien guy here. And we're going to go to the flight suit. And he has a gradient here. That's, yeah, the incidence angle. So I'm going to disable that on the shiny silver. And the black vinyl is a library item. So let's scroll down here to the library. And again, 
there is an incidence angle gradient on here, so I'm going to disable that as well. So we'll need to rebake the maps for the flight suit, and then we need to rebake the maps for the knee pads. So let's increase this to 12 millimeters on the knee pads. And then what we would do is we would select the knee pads and the belt tools and the flight suit and the boots now. And then we're going to go and say bake selected. Now, I think it's pretty obvious what the workflow is going to be to sit here and uh, refine these images. So you don't necessarily need me to show you, uh, you know, to literally show you how to click on the buttons. I think it's pretty obvious workflow for right now. So I'm just going to save my scene. And, and just in case, when we look at the images, forgot to point out earlier, some of these images will have this little asterisk next to them. And what that's pointing out is those have not been saved yet. So since we've just baked that, what we want to do is we want to go up here to File, and we want to go to Save, Save All Images. And what that's going to do is systematically go through, and any of the images that have not yet been saved, it's going to save those into that folder. It'll take a couple minutes to go through and do all of that. Because there's 46 images, there's going to be quite a bit of information to save onto the disk. All right, you can see all those little asterisks are all gone now. So all of our images are definitely saved. So really what I want to show you now is what this all looks like sort of in its baked glory. So what we need to do for that is to go into our advanced viewport mode. So I'm going to go here to advanced viewport and select that. And then now we can get much better idea of what that object looks like. So I'm going to go here and select my morph map pop those objects back into place. So that looks pretty good, but we're not going to get a real good look of what that looks like until we get a better environment, because we can actually use the environment to light our scene here. Let's go into our shader tree, and I'm going to go into my environment. So the original scene used a layered environment, and because of that, it's not able to show up here in the advanced viewport. So I'm just going to move this up into the secondary environment. And then on the viewport settings itself, we're going to want to go in and make sure that it's using that environment to light the scene. So get on our little gear icon here, and we want to go to the advanced options. This is the options for the advanced viewport. And we want to make sure for lighting that we set scene plus environment, and then our background is set to environment. It's going to take a few seconds for it to calculate all of that information. And then now we can see in our actual scene it's looking much more like a rendered. So this is the, keep in mind, this is the low resolution object. Even with some of those baking errors, it still looks pretty amazing. I'm going to hit my forward slash to turn off those wireframes. But using all of those various maps now, I mean, we really get an amazing look at what the viewport is capable of. just love seeing this stuff all in real time like this. So I think that pretty much wraps up the baking portion. So I showed you how to use the manual baking method. And then after that, we went through and we used the bake wizard to generate the bake items and automatically generate all the various layers. Then I gave you some tips on how to refine those images and then bake them again using the bake items very simply. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to finish baking out these textures and do my iterations to refine those. And then in the next video, we'll be doing the look dev to convert the Moto default materials that we've baked out into UE4 compatible surfaces that we can then export out to Unreal Editor.